and it's displayed right here. So if I bring up the image, and if I fill up the focus window, and if I focus in on that, I always have to make sure I'm kind of close to that 10 millimeters, because realistically I'm at 10.04, which is great. That's fine. All right? That's just not real. Just just know that. Okay. okay. So that's bringing the question. When you tilt it, it's what kind of working distance are you looking at? Um, whatever this will read, it'll still be 10. You could you could raise it up to 10 or whatever. You can still do that. But again, um, you'll like let's say if you're focused and that says 11. So as aware. And this will say 10, right? It's, so just know that you're one millimeter off. It's depending on where you look at. Right? Yeah. So if you look at top of the grid, this might be eight. If it looks like well, the lower. focal plane will still be the same because you have to lower the stage a little bit. Yes. If right. it's tilted, you look at top. That's right. The top of the grid will be. So then you adjust the you stage. You have to adjust the Z. You have to bring the Z down to 12. Then, to make it to. To accommodate uh, 10 millimeters. Because yes, EDS important. is 10 millimeters. Yes. That's critical. Okay. okay. Got it. It's a fixed position detector. That's why. Yeah. 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 Anyway. All right. So so our, our SEM beam is on. We're looking at stuff great. I created a shortcut on this desktop for you labeled Iridium Ultra. Do you see that up here? On the top desktop? Oh, yeah. On the top monitor, right? Yeah, the top monitor. Monitor. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. So we have two monitors, right? The mouse uh, scrolls to both monitors, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to go to our top. So we go to our top monitor. I'm just going to double click Iridium Ultra. So as soon as I double click, that's going to open up this loading Iridium Ultra. It's initializing, communicating with the analysis dongle. All this stuff, you want it to be no errors come up through that initialization. And then eventually it pops open the software bundle. So this up here is our main software window. And as you can see, um, right now, we have x-ray events up here. If we look at this little top bar, see what says C slash S? Mm -hmm. That stands for counts per second, or x-ray events per second. So right now we have roughly 200 x-ray events per second. Mm -hmm. Let me just close this to get this out of the way. Great. So, Realistically, to do a good EDS analysis, you want to have minimum of 500 counts per second. Right now we have 200, but we are on the smallest spot size of the microscope. See my probe current here? It's one. Alex, see that? One. Right? So the beam is very small in the microscope. So if I open up the beam, mm -hmm. naturally I'll have more x-ray events, right? Yep. Right. So if I come here to Pro Current and if I click on that and if I go, let's say, spot size 13, this gets really bright because I got more beam now, right? So I'm going to take my contrast, I'm going to lower it a little bit, just lower the contrast a little, great. And if I look at my x-ray events, what do I have now? I have 1,600 events per second, right? And it'll move, it jumps, it, that's fine, right? So I have 16, roughly 1,400 x-ray events per second. This little meter right here that's labeled, that's going five, six, seven, these little numbers that are popping around here, mm -hmm. that's percentage of dead time. So that's the amount of x-rays that aren't being processed. So 5% of them aren't being processed, and that's okay. That's a ratio, and that goes to traffic like green, yellow, and red. Eventually go to 30%, 40%, depending on how far I open up this beam, because realistically I could, I could take this beam and I can go from spot size 13, I could even go to spot size, for instance, you know, let's go to spot size 19, and now I've got how many x-ray events? I've got 8,000 events hitting yes. a second. Yeah. And my dead time has gone to 20% dead time, yeah. which is still okay. It's still perfectly fine. No harm, no foul. Mm -hmm. Right? Good. No, but it doesn't read in my short of the No, no. We can no. still process. There's really no... It's just for your own information. It's okay, not it's ideal good, so. for you to be using the system at 100% okay. dead time. So it doesn't hurt that. It's, it's not, not hurt hurting anything. Okay. okay. But you want that ratio to always be somewhere where it's you know, acceptable, for instance, you know, somewhere in the traffic light of green, right, green, yellow. So if I, if I open this up even more, yeah, let's go right. full open. No, this no. is just the, uh, I, I the So if I go full the open to 20, system. right, mm -hmm. now my ratio is, I've got 16,000 counts a second, and I've got 37% dead time, right? Yep. Yes. So it's still okay. Yeah. Even at 37% dead time, where it went green, it's starting to get a little bit yellow, and eventually it'll go red. Well. I also have the smallest aperture in there right now. I've got a 20 micron aperture in the microscope. So if I was to open up this aperture, right? This is an aperture. If I start dialing that out and get to one of our bigger apertures, I might pull 60, 70, 80,000 counts a second, which would be great if we're doing x-ray math. If we're trying to focus an image at 10,000 X, it might not be too good. But if we're looking at an image at 200 X, yeah, we could look at an x-ray map at 60,000 counts a second and develop a map in a second. Because you got to think about this for a second. I mean, when I'm in context, I'm skipping. I'm skipping, but I'm going back. Mm -hmm. So if I lose, if I lose you guys, don't worry about it. We're gonna get back to it. Mm -hmm. The more X-ray events I have per second is more information. 
right? And if I can acquire a lot of information in a short amount of time, well, then I can give you the results very, very quickly, right? Back in the old days where liquid nitrogen detectors only allowed us to acquire 1,500 counts a second, right? We're acquiring 16,000 counts a second right now, yeah. right? The max for an LN2 detector was like around, like I said, 1,500 counts a second. So mm -hmm. it processes information very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. We can process it super fast, all right? So mm -hmm. for the most part, above 500 counts a second, you'll get good enough data. But I'm just telling you what we can do with this tool. Mm -hmm. Eventually, when you guys start playing around with this, Right, and you got, you got, you know, we're, we're learning how to walk right now, right? We're mm -hmm. actually learning how to crawl. Mm -hmm. yeah. As soon as you guys start walking, then I'll come back in and we'll talk about beam diameters and even bigger principles. But for now, just know without adjusting the apertures, leaving the way they are for right now, because then we got to get into aligning apertures and all sorts of good stuff like that. If you open up the spot size all the way up to 20, we're going to pull roughly 16,000 counts a second, which is a ton. Mm -hmm. It's great. It's great for us. So let's even lower that right now. So let's say 13. Spot size 13. Bring up the contrast, this way we still have good imaging quality, and we can still have our 1500 counts a second, which is great up here, right? Mm -hmm. So, percentage of dead time counts per second. So far, so good on you these two things. Spots for the things right now, we're, at, we're, we're, in, we're in a sweet spot. Mm -hmm. 20,000 counts a second, that's a sweet spot. There is no sweet spot for this, these systems these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back in the old days, it you was like to. we need to be. 1,200 counts a second with 32% dead time, that's where it has to be. Right. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. right. that's, that's like, anyway. Mm -hmm. So, we just we need to know what these ratios are, and that's why I'm going, spending a lot of time going over this. Mm -hmm. Also, you have something over here labeled TC, mm -hmm. right next door to it. That's time constant. That's the amount of time it spends processing every x-ray event. And right now, the TC is set to four. Mm -hmm. So it's looking at it for four microseconds, every x-ray event. So four microseconds is going to be your highest resolution time constant. So if you're trying to dis decipher between two elements that share elemental lines, let's say like moly and sulfur, for instance, you would need to look at it at time constant four to get those two peaks to really, really define each other, mm -hmm. right? If we're looking at a time constant, because this is adjustable, I can go to time constant two, I can go to time constant one, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, time constant 1630. 8, 16, 30, I'm going to shut those off. Those won't be available to you guys anymore. Those are for liquid nitrogen detectors. LN2 detectors require 32, 16, 8. SDD detectors are 4, 2, 1, 0.5, and 0.25. So realistically, 0.4 will be the time constant that you're going to do most of the bulk of your work. If we're doing x-ray maps, and I keep jumping around to these x-ray maps, because these are important things. When you start doing x-ray maps, you want to look at the information faster. So we don't need to look at it at 4 microseconds, because we're really not looking at spectral peak resolution. We're looking at pixel information. So if we're looking at pixel information, if we're colorizing a pixel, color red for aluminum, we don't care about it. We're just looking at it. It's red as aluminum. So let's just process the information really, really fast. So what happens is if I have my spot size, if I have my spot size or my probe current, let's say up to 20, right, where the beam is really wide, you're going to see, well, this ratio changed to 36% dead time, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to change that ratio, if I change this to, to time constant of 2, look what happened to my analysis ratio went from 36 to 18. Mm -hmm. Right, I've got less dead time because I'm looking at information faster. Mm -hmm. So before I was looking at it, I was like, it's aluminum. Yeah, it's definitely aluminum. No question about it, it's aluminum. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, that's aluminum, right? Mm -hmm. And if I go to time constant 1, 1 microsecond, it's like, aluminum, right? But again, I'm able to change this my time constant, my process information time, strictly for the mapping feature of this software, just to let you know. That's what it's really for. For your normal everyday bulk analysis and bulk work, you can work at time constant four. Mm -hmm. Even at time constant two, that's a really good resolution time constant as well. But if you're gonna work at 0.5 and 0.25, mm -hmm. then what's gonna happen is the spectral peak information might get a little bit a little bit more dense or wider. Mm -hmm. So for now, we're gonna learn how to crawl and I'm gonna leave you guys in time constant four. I just went through this whole explanation just to let you know what this is on this on this bar. Mm -hmm. This is very, very important. And that's why I want to that's why I'm talking about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? The next thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to, I'm going to change the spot size again. I'm going to bring this down to about 13 again. The next thing I'm going to talk about is KV. See acceleration voltage there? Mm -hmm. Up on here. Mm -hmm. See this KV20? We're not reading the KV off the microscope. We will be reading it off the microscope when we do our next software update. Okay. So that's going to happen. But for now, temporarily, Alex, you're going to be yeah. inconvenienced. Manual. You're going to have to put this manual number in. Because whatever acceleration voltage this microscope is at 20, we need to tell the X-ray system we're looking at it at 20,000 volts, acceleration volts. Because if we don't, 
It doesn't know where to, where to quantify the information to. Because mm -hmm. it needs to know that, hey, at 20,000 volts, I'm lighting up these elements on a KEV scale. Right? Let's say copper lights up at 8.04 KEV. If I'm at 5 KEV, I'm not going to light up copper, the copper K line at 8 KEV. Mm -hmm. right? I'll, I'll light up the copper L line, which is down at the other end, mm -hmm. but I won't light, light up the K line. Because right? we have different shells. Yep. K, right, are you familiar? Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's important. So just know, whatever acceleration voltage the microscope is at, we need to put that in. Remember Alex, we were playing around with KV before? Yeah. Looking at your uh, rhodium at 5 KV, we saw more, right? Because we weren't penetrating deep enough with the beam. Yeah. Okay, so that's important. So just know that. And there's also another thing here labeled mag. Hey, that's important too. Mm -hmm. So we need to tell what magnification the microscope is at as well. Mm -hmm. Because we have particle measurement system on our x-ray software. We've got micron markers, we've got measurement systems, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't know the magnification, it's going to give you all erroneous results. Mm -hmm. So if the microscope right now is at 1,619x, mm -hmm. we need to come here, blue this scale out, and we need to go 1619. We need to tell it that. Because this, this system does imaging for us as well. So the future will also link. That's all, that will also be linked to. What also is going to be linked to is the stage is going to be linked as well. Alex. Some people drive the stage, you go to all sorts of cool. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be so integrated, you, you're going to be, it's going to be incredible. We can give it a whole job to do it. We can even tell it to turn the beam off. It's going to talk to the microscope big time. Um, we've started the communication with MCraft just to let you, just let you know what the status of that is. We've got all the communication done through IXRF, so we're all set on the IXRF end of it. JB's first run at this communication talking, we've got a couple of bugs. I've been dealing with it with one of his uh, his higher end service uh, app guys named DK, and DK's uncle just died last week, and so he's been unavailable to me because we were supposed to work on that Sunday night, and we didn't, obviously. And so it's just a matter of telling us where to go. Uh, I'm just gonna hop to something really quick just to let you know what I'm talking about. I go to config, this is my, 